Today is Thursday, June 20th, 2019, Thursday of the 11th week in Ordinary Time. And so now we reach the third commandment. Basically, the third commandment is the last of the three that revolve, revolve around our relationship with God Almighty. But what is the third commandment? Go to church every Sunday. Yeah. That shall not kill, that shall not. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. <gasps> All right, Father Peter, hit me. Third commandment. Third commandment. Honor the Sabbath. Now, some may ask, why is keep holy the Sabbath a commandment, at the level of a commandment? And I'm going to say because of the deadly sin of sloth, of that spiritual laziness that many people have. Just look at the many simplistic excuses people make as to why they will miss Mass on a particular Sunday. Oh, I stayed in bed. Oh, the big game was on. Oh, I had other things to do. You make time for what's important to you. And uh, for now, for people nowadays, church isn't really important, which is really sad. Now, our new candle system here involves using real candles. The system's kind of ingenious because what it does is the candle burns, and as it gets to the bottom, there's like a little funnel in the glass that allows the wax to drop and be extinguished because there's water below. Now, outside of the system, I can't see how somebody would be able to use one of these because there's no bottom on it. But there has been someone who has been stealing these from us, and I don't know why. What, what are they going to do with it? Now, of course, because of this deadly sin of sloth, there's a lot of spiritual things that people don't do. I'm not here today to really get too deep into that part of it. The bottom line is that God has asked in his relationship to us that we relate to him by holding a sacred assembly on a regular basis, namely on Sundays for Christians. Well, he tells us to honor the Sabbath because we were to restrain from work, we're to restrain, that's the day of rest, just like he rested on the seventh day during Genesis. But he tells us to go to Mass because it's a friendship, it's a relationship. You can't have a relationship just with yourself and you and the God that's not physically there. I think one of the things that has been tied into this whole thing of the Sunday obligation is the obligation of our priests to also faithfully celebrate the liturgy. I think it's actually imperative that we priests do the liturgy the way the church asks. Now, myself, having grown up in the 70s and 80s, saw a lot of experimentation with the liturgy that was just someone's idea or opinion. It never really belonged. If you were set free to go and be your own person and do what you need to do, you have to have an understanding of who you are and what you need to do in order to go out and do that, right? So when the new missile came out, our bishop here basically issued a memo that, for the lack of better, um, a better way to say it, was do the red, read the black. It's not that hard. Among some of the things that was pointed out in this memo, were things like personal greetings at the beginning or the end of Mass. Effectively, what had happened in the 70s and 80s was the Mass became Father's Mass rather than the Mass of Ro the Holy Roman Catholic Church. Well, I grew up in the 90s mostly, but um, the culture, even, even in a Catholic school, was uh, encouraging to, to pretty much be your own person. But unfortunately, that deviated without an understanding of what... Um, what you needed to have as a, as a Christian or as a human being even. I mean, even to this day, there are still priests who make the Mass about themselves and about their personality, forgetting that the liturgy itself is universal. It's not limited to any one priest. There are built-in greetings in the liturgy itself. When I say the Lord be with you, that's a way of greeting. Peace be with you. That's a way of greeting. We don't need a lot of good mornings and have a nice day in the liturgy. It just doesn't belong. Like, how many commandments do you know? How many? I think like six or seven. Okay. Now, mind you, the memo we received, we were told, was basically under penalty of obedience. Do it, but what is the threat going to be? And so with regard to that first thing that the bishop asked, that we not have personal greetings inside of the liturgy, there was a priest here who went berserk. I can't believe I can't say good morning to my people. This is absolutely ridiculous. What is he going to do, fire me? No. And so what do we have? Father still makes the mass about himself. 
And so why am I tying this into the third commandment? If father doesn't have to follow the rules, do I? My dad used to say when, um, when we were growing up, he's like, there are, what, how many hours in a week? 168. 160, is it? Maths. Yes, 168. And God only asks for one. I don't think people were saying it explicitly, but sure there's an implicit aspect to this that says, you know, everything's up for, everything's up for grabs. Do whatever you want. Here's how serious the problem can be at times. There was a priest who had basically committed liturgical abuses according to the memo we received from our bishop. So I decided to just share the memo with him. When I asked him what he thought, he says, I refuse to read that memo. I refuse. And now he's still continuing to abuse the liturgy. It's that kind of defensiveness, though, that some have that will make the whole uh, revival of the church and the revival of our Sunday assemblies very difficult. If priests can't unite around the altar and pray faithfully to the way we are asked by the church, what do we have left? Anarchy. And so I do say to all priests, it's up to us to be faithful to the liturgy and to just do what Mother Church asks us to do. Okay, I'm making a quick ride out to my new place. I want to drop some stuff off, as you can see I got in the back there. All right, I've arrived here at St. Joseph's. Right behind me here, as you can see, is my new home. Be moving in here by this time next week. I'll be living here. This is Bernie. Hi, everybody. So Bernie's giving me a quick once around here, and God love him, he knows this place inside and out. I think I'm gonna be talking to him an awful lot. You got one thing you gotta remember on Long Island is that the roads can have traffic at any given time. They decided to do a little bit of mowing today. Mowing caused traffic. You want to say something to me? Secret? Anything? Secret? Didn't we do number three? Oh, you need to go to church every Sunday. 